Alrighty, Hasses. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys some alternative ways of handling user events. So the first thing I actually want to do is delete all the code that we wrote in the last video, which was this implements. And remember, we got this handle from the interface, so we can delete that too. Don't need it anymore. And also this. So remember, the code that we write in here, which was this, is saying whenever an event occurs on this button, look in this class to handle the code. So essentially any code that's in here is the code to handle this button click. Now instead of just implementing it and writing some method down here, we can actually stick all of that right in these parameters. And this is called an anonymous inner class. And if we write new event handler, remember, any time a button click occurred, what we needed to do was we needed to call this handle method and it was inside the event handler interface. So this is just a little more compact version of what we did in the last video. Um, pretty much everything is just right here instead of spread out all over. And just to demonstrate this real quick, system out print line. I'll say like I am in, how do you spell anonymous? O-N-Y-M-O-U-S, uh, is that it? All right, so I'm an anonymous inner class. There you go. And if I run this and click, hey, baby, you can see that it pretty much does the exact same thing. Now, another reason that I like this, aside from just being a little bit cleaner and not having your code spread out all over the place is whenever you use anonymous inner classes you don't have to check the event source remember I said in the last tutorial if we had multiple buttons we would need to add an if condition if button if button 2 if button 3 what code or excuse me what object is responsible for calling this handle well now the functionality is tied directly to that object so it takes care of that problem however check this out every time we want to print a simple line of code whenever they click a button we need to call this interface and this method and if we make another button look how clunky it'll look it's like 12 different lines of code for just two buttons kind of a pain in the butt now the fine ladies and gentlemen at Oracle they realized that this was a problem as well so beginning with Java 8 what they did is they introduced a syntax called lambda expressions and I want to show you guys how easy this is so get rid of all this crap and instead of implementing anything or using an anonymous inner class type this syntax e hyphen greater than and then just have some kind of called like system out print line and this will print out some text like hey now brown cow now the reason that this is underlined is because remember I said that this new syntax to make everything more compact called lambda expressions was introduced in Java 8 now if I go to file and where is it I believe it's in project structure alright so the project language ugh, tongue twister project language level is set to 6 right now I want to go ahead and set that to 8 and you can actually see lambdas type annotations all that good stuff but if I hit apply it goes away so that's pretty much saying what version of Java are you using I want to use Java 8 there you go alright so now let's break this up and see what happened well let's first of all let me show you guys that it works so I'm going to click hey baby and it's going to print out hey now brown cow. That is stinking awesome. It's a lot easier than writing any code here using any, you know, implementing anything and writing that handle stuff. All of your functionality is in one little line of code. Now there's actually a lot to cover regarding lambdas and this isn't a lambda tutorial. This is a JavaFX tutorial, but essentially what's happening is this. Since the event handler interface only has one method inside it remember that handle method we can use this lambda because Java automatically knows by the context of our code and how it's written to treat this 
as your event handler. So E represents the event. This little thing again is called the arrow operator. So E is your parameter on the left hand side and any code that you run or write in your method body goes on the right hand side. Now since we only have one line of code, we don't need those curly um, braces just like an if statement. If we had multiple lines of code, we can actually, here let me copy this. We can actually use curly braces and then write like, hey now brown cow, um, I am a meatball. These were the first two things that popped in my head for some reason. So again, one line of code can just go on the same line. If you have multiple lines of code, they can go on multiple lines. But look how clean this is. Lambdas are freaking awesome. So let me run this and check it out. Hey baby, prints out your code. That is amazing. So again, a lot cleaner. And I want to reiterate one more time that there is a lot to cover regarding Lambda expressions. I'm probably going to make an advanced Java tutorial where, um, covering Lambda expressions and also these things called streams, which are another awesome feature in Java 8. But for right now, I just want to show you guys this new syntax because this is a syntax that I'm likely going to be using um, from here on out. So again, all the source code is on GitHub. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Yada yada tomato tomato. I'll see you next time.